Welcome to this video about two-phase flow regimes. We will have a look at flow regimes in horizontal and vertical pipes and we will see what happens if we have other inclination angles. We will partly do it by using this flow pattern analyzer which is an integral part of the Flowline Pro. We are able to take the cursor and move around in the diagram and then see what happens at various places. We can have a bubble flow, we can have stratified flow, we can have slug flow of various types and we can also have annular flow. We will look at more details there in a short moment. This general uh, flow regime diagram is valid for one particular pipe diameter and one particular fluid. So such flow regime diagrams are in general not valid for any other than a specific example. We see that along this axis we have the liquid velocity multiplied by its fraction, a liquid fraction. For our purpose we can say that this is the liquid volumetric flow. And here we have the volumetric gas flow along this axis. So when we go out here, we have a lot of gas flowing here. If we go up this way, we have a lot of liquid. If we have none of those, if it, everything is at rest, then clearly we have stratified flow. The liquid will be at the bottom and the gas will stay at the top. If we start to let the gas flow, it will still be stratified. At some point we will reach a place where, where, where we get waves on top of this and if we increase the, the flow even more we can go into annular flow or we can go into slug flow. Or if we increase it even more it becomes dispersed bubble flow where the bubbles are kind of uh, following the liquid more or less uh, in, in the flow. The stratified flow shifts to slug flow or an annular flow if the gas velocity is strong enough that it, it, it works like an airplane wing on the liquid. So in a way it lifts the liquid upwards and up towards the top of, of the pipe. If the level is high enough, enough liquid level, then we get slug flow, or if the gas velocity is very high, then in a way it blows a hole in the liquid, so we get annular flow. The liquid would then be squeezed along the sides of the pipe all the way around, and there will be droplets also inside. This uppermost line is defined by the turbulence. If the liquid flows quite fast it will create so much turbulence that the bubbles which tend to rise to the upper side of the pipe all the time, they will be mixed into the liquid faster than they rise. So for high liquid flow we tend to get uh, uh, bubble flow. If we have a vertical pipe, we have pretty much the same aspects. Uh, we may have annular flow. We may also have churn flow, which is kind of a slug flow where the, where the tail of bubbles, the gas in between the slugs, uh, in a way stretches through the slug. So in, for some purposes, we can look at it as a kind of a slug flow also. And we have dispersed bubble flow. And, uh, but we, of course, we do not have stratified flow because nothing is up or down uh, once we are in in a vertical pipe that's like in microgravity you can't have uh, there's nothing making it stratified in there we generally prefer to not have slugging in a flow line and it's also best uh, if at least if we have wet gas if liquid doesn't build up so that we need a strong enough gas flow to bring the liquid with it out of there. That's, that's the best situation. And also we want to have a high confidence in what the simulations tell us. Because if we aren't sure whether it will work the way we think it will, then it's risky to, to, to create a whole oil and gas development based on the theory. 
So is it realistic to achieve this? Well, uh, we will look at some of the aspects uh, relevant to that question. We go back to the flow pattern analyzer and we have chosen data up here which are typical for uh, the Orman Lange uh, flow line which is actually a three phase flow line so we may have some water plus some condensate and mostly gas but uh, in order to not make this too complicated we ignore the water part of this so we pretend there is only condensate and gas in there and in the horizontal situation we see that for this line we get the pretty different uh, fl um, flow pattern diagram than we saw uh, on the slide uh, two minutes ago and we can see if we have very low gas flow we tend to get a much higher level of liquid in there uh, and of course if we go ha up along higher um, liquid flow we, we it can be almost full of liquid if we come in here we we have slugs and the slug length will also depend on how much liquid we have compared to gas and there will also be gas bubbles in there uh, if we in the slug and then the yellow thing we see on the right in this little icon is is the tail of bubble that that's simply a lot of gas we can also pay attention to the numbers down here which then tell us alpha g uh, is the gas fraction so gas fraction one means it's pure gas in there and gas fraction zero means it's pure liquid and uh, and it's actually the same which is illustrated in this little icon here we we, we show a higher liquid level when when the liquid fraction goes up and the gas fraction goes down now what happens if we increase the angle now it's horizontal suppose we increase the angle a bit we see that has consequences for the flow regime I go up to let's say one degree up uphill so we are now using a 90 degree scale so 90 degrees are vertical and one degree or zero degrees horizontal so this is slightly uphill we see that the, the slug part becomes much much larger uh, indicating that such flow lines are very very sensitive to the elevation angle when we are near horizontal uh, pipe so we see uh, as long as we stick to high enough gas volumetric flows we will avoid slugs in this case uh, if we go much further up let's see what happens then let's say we go all the way up to vertical flow surprisingly little chance of slugging then as well we will have slugging in some areas over here and we may have bubble flow in some areas but but these are flows that won't really happen very often in in Ormond Longa certainly not so for the most part we will actually have annular flow if it's vertical no there happens not to be much vertical flow in the in the Ormond Longa flow line so that's really not relevant but it shows it, us the tendency anyway uh, and we see annular flow we have the droplets being transported in in the gas and we have the liquid film on the side there I reset to horizontal flow again and try to vary some of the other parameters suppose that rho g which is the gas density rather than being 89 kilograms per cubic meter which may be typical at one particular point in the pipe but of course the density varies due to temperature and pressure variations suppose the the gas density was higher what would happen then let's increase it up to let's say double or something like that 180 or something like that then we see that the slug area almost disappears so we are in much safer territory when it comes to avoiding uh, any slugs in that case and it makes sense because a higher gas density means the the, the gas uh, becomes a bit more like a liquid in a way it has a greater capacity to drag the liquid with it along and out of the pipeline so there's a smaller tendency for the liquid to build up to a level where where we would get uh, slugging there's only a, a little bit of annular uh, up here 
so we can be pretty sure that if we had this high density of the gas and if we had almost any gas velocity or, or, or gas volumetric flow we we wouldn't see anything other than stratified flow in the horizontal pipe of the line we could try to change the angle again and uh, now even though it is 1.2 degrees uphill there's still a very small tendency for slugging to form with a very low liquid vol uh, volumetric flow we expect and the relatively high gas volumetric flows so we can conclude uh, high gas density is in itself a good thing when it comes to avoiding slugging because it makes the gas more capable of uh, remove the liquid from the pipe uh, but that's not quite that simple in reality since higher gas density which you could achieve if you had higher pressure in your pipe uh, would also mean that whichever which uh, the mass flow going through there leads to a lower velocity if we have higher pressure the density goes up and then of course the velocity goes down for the same mass flow so uh, therefore the overall effect may actually be opposite the higher velocity you get in lower pressures uh, would uh, have a better ability to get the liquid out of there what about if we change the liquid density instead let's say the liquid density goes up that has some effect but small actually according to these calculations it has smaller effect than increasing the gas density reset again what about the viscosities suppose we increase the gas viscosity again it has very little effect on the flow regime diagram but it does have some effect if we look down here where the friction is written that friction will actually go up a bit if we increase the gas uh, viscosity but of course I have to point at the particular part in the diagram so the friction goes up a bit but uh, but not terribly much it, it it may the results here may actually indicate that the viscosity of the gas isn't properly properly accounted for in the way we estimate the friction between liquid and gas it's hard to be sure because the calculation methods available aren't aren't 100 uh, percent reliable to put it mildly uh, sigma gl is the surface tension between gas and liquid what about that one is it sensitive to it if we increase the surface tension double it for instance no it has very little effect in the horizontal part but it would have more effect in the vertical part we can probably see see that here yeah, we see it has some effect on how large the annular area will be but not really a, a huge effect the same can be said about uh, the equivalent sand grain roughness a measure for how smooth the inner pipe surface is if I increase that it doesn't play much of a role for the flow regime but it does play a role not not very much though for the friction uh, that is simply because there are other other methods which creates friction in multi-phase flow not only the the friction towards the pipe wall we lose energy also from the friction between the liquid and the gas uh, let's do a last experiment we are now back to horizontal pipe again and we have increased the resolution of the diagram somewhat so the diagram looks a bit nicer it takes more time to calculate it then though if we pay attention to the uh, gas mass flows or, or let's say the, the the fraction over here the gas fraction when we cross from one 
flow regime to the next we will actually see that it isn't a huge jump in in average uh, gas fraction for instance here in the stratified flow if I cross over to bubble flow now we see the the gas fraction is around uh, 0.79 and when I cross over here it's almost a smooth a, a smooth step here and, and even though we use totally different equations in those two parts of the diagram but it actually seems to indicate that <laughs> there is a very smooth uh, transformation anyway uh, somewhat surprising uh, perhaps if we go into the slug part of this uh, pay attention to the gas fraction again now it's 0.836 and I go in here and it becomes 0 0.12, uh, 0 0.82 let's say so it isn't much of a step there either so it that's that's again r relatively relatively surprising there's a somewhat larger step here but but not huge So it means although it flows in a totally different way, we calculate in a totally different way, the total amount of liquid as opposed to gas isn't, isn't terribly different just as the, the switch from one flow pattern to the, to the other happens. But once we walk further into another flow pattern, then of course uh, things become very different. We have also tried to estimate how sure we can be on the flow regime. So the probability is here said to be 100% in some cases if we pay attention to this number when I move around in the diagram now we see that in, in large parts we feel pretty confident that we know what the flow regime is going to be down here in the stratified area in horizontal pipe flow we are pretty sure but of course once we come close to where we get slug we of course uh, it's less certain precisely when that happens so here we're into slug and we aren't very sure of that maybe 55 percent chance we believe is all we can conclude from the equations we have used uh, up here we are more sure that it's it is slug so we aren't very sure of that and if we go into the bubble flow we become pretty sure here where we are far from the flow pattern uh, boundaries here is also an area where we are not 100% sure but but not terribly unsure either uh, let's also pay attention to the the friction here when we cross a border suppose I go from here to here the friction actually changes quite a lot but the fraction does not and let's go into the slug not so big difference there well there is some step when, when I cross the, the boundary and same up here there we have uh, 205 and they jump 250 so here there is quite slugging actually causes quite much more friction than bubble flow up in this area but that is quite far away from what we will experience in in the Ormond Longa where we have mostly gas and very little liquid it can it can happen though during startup and, and situations like that some of the conclusions from what we have seen high gas velocity minimizes liquid fraction and slugging so it's good to keep high gas velocity if we can and for that matter high gas density but we can usually not uh, choose that without also reducing the velocity uh, <coughs> results are very sensitive to elevation angle for near horizontal lines we therefore need very accurate elevation profiles in our simulations in order to get accurate simulation results so we may have to do surveys on on the lines perhaps uh, a small ROV swimming over the line uh, in order to know the elevations quite accurately uh, and uh, before the line is laid of course we we also need to to find out as accurately as we can what the elevations will become 
Simulation accuracy depends on the flow situation. In some areas we saw we are pretty sure what flow regime we will encounter, while other times we are not. And uh, so we can be near regime change, then it's mostly on most uncertain. But there are also other inaccuracies we didn't really talk about in the PVT properties, for instance. If we don't know precisely which fluid we have, we do not know precisely which viscosities and densities and so on we have either. And we may not know how much liquid we have compared to gas. And the line elevation profile is not always well enough known. So any input data uh, can be quite important, especially elevation profile when we are near horizontal flow. And obviously the best design and operational practice requires great care, including intelligent use of available data and simulation software. There is no way you can come up with anything accurate by doing manual calculations here. You can go to the internet site drbratland.com and watch more videos and you can also download free copies of two books describing the theory behind the simulations you just saw. Uh, at least part of the theory, not all of it is there, but uh, some of it is. And there is also a report there describing a realistic simulation of three-phase flow in the Orman Lange flow line. We, we only focused on two-phase flow here, but the three-phase flow simulations are also shown in that report and, and in the video there. Thank you for listening.